Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy from the Quick Mail Otayo. And this is Jack from Emails That Sell. Episode 24. How to use scarcity in your cold emails to get more replies. We'll cover what scarcity is and how it can help you increase your reply rate, common pitfalls to avoid when using scarcity in your cold emails, and a simple way to add scarcity into your breakup email. Jack, before we start, could you uh, let us know what what you mean by scarcity in an email? Scarcity is one of the six influence factors in Robert Cialdini's book, Influence. And Jeremy and I are big fans of the book. And we try and incorporate these, quote unquote, weapons of influence in our cold email campaigns because they work. So scarcity is the idea that Whatever is in short supply will have a higher demand than something that is unlimited. I'm thinking, does that really work for cold email? That's a great question because it can fail miserably if you try it the wrong way, or it can help out. To be honest, I think scarcity is the most challenging of the six influence factors outlined in the book Influence because it can be off-putting if you use it incorrectly. What I mean by using it incorrectly is like scarcity is famous for being used in a limited time offers. The, the price is cheaper for the next 48 hours. Click here to buy now. And I'm telling you, if you try and present a list of cold email prospects, an opportunity to buy now for a reduced price, it won't work because we're just not ready to have that conversation yet. Yeah, you're going to be flagged as spammer very, very quickly. It's a typical car sales dealer, you know, 20% off just today if you walk away, the offer is gone kind of thing. Totally. So I have a, a cold email folder in my Gmail inbox, and this email tried to use scarcity in order to get me to reply. The pitch is, I'm gathering testimonies before launching publicly. So if you're interested in moving forward, you will only pay $750 for an entire campaign. That offer expires on 622. So first of all, this was the very first cold email I had gotten from this person. I am light years away from discussing price. I don't know if it's a good fit for me. I'm not even sure what he does. So coming at me with a buy now or else offer flat out failed. I think this is a very important point. It's like most people are using it really badly. And I think it's it's really simple. It's like, are you using scarcity to get someone to buy now? You know, is your call to action save 50% by going here and, and taking this action and giving me your credit card? If that's how you're thinking about using scarcity, then it won't work. However, there's a few other ways that you can creatively use scarcity in a good way that's going to get more positive replies coming in. All right. So which one are they? My favorite one is using scarcity to get a coffee meeting or get a a sit down with somebody that you'd like to meet with because you're in their city for a limited time. Oh, I love that one. A, it's super genuine. There's no marketing sleaze around that. It's just like, hey, I'm in San Fran for the next two days. While I'm in town, it'd be great to meet you for XYZ. Do you have any availability? Something like that would be an example of a good way to use scarcity. Jeremy, how about you? What do you have for using scarcity that works in cold email? This is a so small disclaimer. This is definitely not my favorite weapon of influence uh, by far. But the one that could work is the breakup email. So it's like, hey guys, this is probably the last email that I'm going to send to you. And if you reply, then hey, great, let's carry on forward. And if not, then, you know, no big deal, but you won't hear from me anymore. So it's kind of the last email makes it more valuable to reply to kind of thing. I got another one that is uh, along the same lines of the one you were mentioning earlier. It's about building a campaign where you mentioned that you have a system for helping generating local leads. And because of the nature of things, you can't really propose that to every, I don't know, chiropractor or every dentist in the city. You kind of have like to work only with a few one of them. Again, I think it comes from the fact that it's sort of like genuine or people understand where the scarcity comes from. 
whether I'm traveling somewhere or whether, you know, I work with just a few people for those reasons that I just highlighted. And then people can understand it. And then the scarcity actually works much better. An example that I've seen is uh, if you're putting a campaign together that invites people to be a guest speaker at your event. Clearly, you cannot have everybody speak at your event. There's a physical limitation on how many folks can get up there and give a talk. So just mentioning that you've got a couple spots open, or even better, just mention the exact number of spots open, and that if you'd be interested, let me know so that I can get you on the calendar before it's uh, kind of booked up with other speakers. But it sounds like the takeaway here is make sure that whatever your offer is, Scarcity is a logical influence factor to use in that campaign. Don't try and force it into an email sequence that doesn't lend itself to scarcity. Here's maybe a a little bit off the wall approach for using scarcity. One of my clients was looking to try out a sort of unique way to bring in sales and also network with people that she was looking to um, meet. So This particular client was well-known in her space. Uh, She's a keynote speaker at a few events. She published a book. And anyway, we we had a test campaign that just was sent out to a handful of high-caliber leads that she wanted to start relationships with. And the email sort of went like this. It said, hey, first name, nice to meet you. I'm XYZ. I think we may have met at this event. I don't get to do this very often, but this is one of my favorite ways to get to network and, and meet fellow, you know, insert job title. You know, I have two spots for, you know, 30 minutes next week where we can do like a marketing teardown. Um, and if you feel like that would be fun to do for insert company name, I'd love to put you on the calendar. Let me know if you'd be interested in this. So it's framed mostly around, I want to sort of hook you up with a, a marketing teardown for your, for your company. We get to know each other. There's a lot of value being exchanged and Finally, you know, I, I do just have two spots. So that may have been one of the reasons the campaign worked is just letting them know that this was kind of a unique situation. It's okay to highlight the limitation where it's a natural one, whether it's a number of spots you have for a conference, whether it's the number of time you have in a week to meet with people. Those are like natural, understood, limited resources that everyone can relate to. As soon as you change that to, hey, you know, we have this promotion. It's only going on until next Tuesday. And I would like you to take advantage of that. This is kind of like engineering to some extent. And then people can have a sort of reluctance to that because we know it's fake. It's arbitrary. And we don't react very well to that. So if somebody is listening and they, they're thinking to themselves that their campaign or their cold email sequence or their offer doesn't lend itself to scarcity. Would you recommend that they change up a few things so that they can test it out? Or would you say, don't even worry about it? No, I think actually one of the great thing of uh, learning about these you know, influence factors is they work very, very well when you combine them. It's sometimes they kind of reinforce themselves. So if you use only one factor, uh, you may perform pretty well. If you use another one, that also will be pretty well. But if you combine those two, then it work exponentially well. And I think knowing and mastering that scarcity influencer is actually going to, to help you out. And that's definitely no reason why not to do an A-B testing with it. Okay, so we mentioned that scarcity, if you're using it based on physical constraints, like you're in the city for two days or you can only service one chiropractor in their area, those logical constraints Uh, lend itself to a good campaign that uses scarcity. But would it ever make sense, Jeremy, to create a typical marketing campaign based around scarcity, such as, you know, we have a limited price discount if somebody has replied to one of your cold emails, but maybe have gone dark, so you want to re-engage that lead? If they're not convinced by the offer, adding scarcity to it is only going to waste everyone's time. They're just going to reply to it because they have to, but that doesn't mean that they're going to follow up through because there's still no sort of like value to them. So I, I actually had one other campaign that I used uh, clear scarcity on and it worked super, super well. 
the campaign was limited to a specific area in a city. And this business was willing to meet in person with anybody who uh, had responded positively to this email campaign. So we basically would target building by building different offices in each building and say, hey, we're, we're going to be in your office on this day talking to this company while we're in the building. You know, would it make sense to have a, a quick meeting to discuss if this would be interesting for you guys as well? That worked really well for a couple of reasons. One, we sort of name dropped that we were meeting with one of their neighbors and also scarcity made a lot of sense to use then because we were in the building for a, a short amount of time and maybe they could you know have a quick meeting to to see if they would be interested in something like this i appreciate scarcity for times like those when it makes sense but a lot of my campaigns don't rely heavily on scarcity i, I think it is the hardest influence factor to use and if you're struggling to figure out where to put scarcity in your campaign other than the breakup email, which I think is kind of a slam dunk, just easy way to try it out, then I wouldn't worry about it because there's five other influence factors that work really well and honestly are a little bit easier to add into almost any email sequence. Yeah, scarcity is a bit like the salt on a meal. You, you can add it to your existing meal, but eating on its own is, is probably not that great. If you guys are using scarcity, then we'd love to know. You can send us an email at podcast at quickmail.io. And the first five people to send us an email, <laughs> see, it already feels weird, you know, just uh, be careful with that. Okay, so in this cast, we learned that scarcity also suffering from a really bad reputation. You know, the car sales dealership kind of thing. It could be quite useful if it's used uh, effectively. Second thing we learned is that genuine logical explanation works a lot better because people can relate to it and can understand uh, where you're coming from. So they kind of accept the scarcity thing. And finally, that you should couple scarcity with other influencing factor so you can take full advantage of it. Hey, cold emailer. Yeah, you. If you got some value from this episode, give us a high vibe by sharing a two-sentence review on iTunes. Or Stitcher or TuneIn. That works too. It's a quick way to help other growth-minded folks like us find this podcast. So they can send awesome emails. And make everyone's inbox a better place. Thanks. Thanks.